One thing is for sure, there is no shortage of advice on how you should go about writing your college application essay. And there are so many books on the market that feature sample college application essays. Now, if you're a follower of my blog, you already know that in general, I advise my students to pretty much ignore most of the advice about how to write your essay, and especially to avoid reading all of these sample essays. So um, if you wanna know the reasons why, make sure you head over to my website and check out my blog. And while you're there, make sure that you sign up for my private emailing list where I send you the most up-to-date information on the college preparation and application process. And to thank you, I also give you two free sessions from within my online program. However, I know that a lot of people are going to wind up reading sample essays anyway. And what I wanna do is teach you how you should go about reading these sample essays. And my advice is going to surprise you, so stay tuned. Hey there, it's Dr. Bernstein, the president and founder of Get Yourself Into College. And as you can see, today we are looking at the New York Times website. We're looking at an article that was recently published, May 17th, 2013, and it's called Visions of College Colored by Money. And in this article, it's really not even an article, it's a supplement to an article, uh, the, they are featuring four application essays by students whose essays happen to talk about money. And what I'm going to do is focus our attention on three important structural and stylistic issues in Shanti Kumar's application essay, which she wrote for Princeton University. Just FYI, she didn't get into Princeton. Uh, she's going to Cornell, another great school. Um, and I don't think that this essay is the reason why she didn't get into Princeton. So I think there's some really good strong points in here that I wanna show you. But first, I wanna share with you what is probably my most important piece of advice, and that is if you are reading these sample essays, don't let yourself get sucked into the content. This is why I usually recommend to my students that they don't read sample essays. But you wind up, when you're reading these essays, what happens is, is that a lot of people wind up getting blocked, like they can't come up with their own ideas, or they get sort of locked into certain ideas about what a good essay should be about. And you definitely want to avoid getting yourself into this kind of situation. If you're going to be reading these sample application essays, then what I want you to be doing is focusing on the student's underlying techniques, st structure, and style. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in relationship to Shanti's essay. The first thing that I wanna point out about Shanti's essay is that she's writing this not as her general common app essay. Instead, this is an essay that is part of Princeton University's supplemental application. And it is an essay topic that um, asks students to reflect on Princeton's unofficial motto, which is Princeton in the nation's service and in the service of all nations. And then they want students to share with the admissions team an event or experience that helped you define one of your values or changed how you approach the world. So what you're gonna notice in this second paragraph is that Shanti is talking about an article, a 2012 article, so a recent article in the New York Times that features quotes from a Princeton professor of bioethics. And in, this, in, in these quotes, this professor is talking about what types of organizations he makes donations to and why he doesn't donate to Princeton. And then at the end of the paragraph, what Shanti is doing is ending with the professor's call for the words of Princeton in the service of all nations to be put into action. So... The emphasis here is that Princeton has this theory, this motto, this ideal, and this professor is urging the college to really put that motto into practice. 
So what I really like about Shanti's approach is that she's taking that quote that's in the Princeton University essay question, and she's situating it within the context of a New York Times article that features quotes by a Princeton professor that um, happened to be directly related to the motto. Now, why, why do I like this? Well, as a college English professor, I can tell you that one of the things that you're going to need to do in college, especially when you're writing papers and even when you're having discussions in class, is to be able to situate your ideas within the context of other people's ideas. So you're having more informed discussions with people and you're situating yourself in this discussion. So what she's doing, consciously or not, in this paragraph is she's subtly showing that she already possesses this ability. Now you definitely do not have to show this in your college application essay. Um, it might not be right for your topic. It might not be right for the flow of your essay. However, it's always good to know your options and to be able to pick and choose from them when you're writing and you're revising your essays. So just keep that in mind. It might help you when you're writing your essay. It might be relevant for you. The second main thing that I want you to notice about Shanti's essay is how she makes transitions. Uh, making transitions, especially in personal narratives like your college application essay, is not always easy. And so one thing that good readers and writers do is when they're reading, as I said before, they're not just reading for the content, they're aware of the style, they're aware of the writer's techniques. And so one way that you learn to write and come up with your own good transitions is by looking at transitions of other writers and seeing whether or not you like them and think they might be effective for you. And I think Shanti does a really good job in various places in her essay at making transitions. So the first major transition here is from the New York Times article. And the second paragraph is not really about Shanti at all. It's just situating those ideas within the context of uh, the New York Times article and the professor's ideas. And then the next paragraph really is a transitional paragraph in general. She's going from the New York Times to herself. And instead of just plunging right into the specific value that she discovered, um, what she does is she goes from the New York Times article itself to her process of reading it. She's describing how she sat at the breakfast table in her pajamas and, uh, and read the article, presumably. But most importantly, she was contemplating what she had just read and think about um, her own perspective on them. And this also is something that you're going to need to do in college, right? Professors don't want you to just read the words on the page and just be able to summarize what an author has said. They want you to be able to think critically. They want you to spend time contemplating what you're reading and what the meaning is. So again, Shanti here is showing that she has this ability, that she's already in some ways operating on a college level in terms of her critical thinking. There's another transition that I want to call your attention to, and it's between the end of this paragraph here and the beginning of the next one right here. So what she says towards the end of her last sentence in this paragraph is that Professor Singer has a unique and different voice in a multi-billion dollar institution. And then right away, she starts her next paragraph with the word different. Different is what I have searched for my whole life. So some people will say, don't, don't repeat the same word. You know, you, this is where people will start like getting into their thesaurus and trying to change the words. But sometimes repetition is a good thing because it's helping her make the transition. It's helping her make a connection between the article and between her own life. Um, and that's helpful. And also she's doing the repetition with a difference. He has a different voice. She has a different way of thinking. That's what she's been searching for. So that's a nice transition to make. 
So again, if you like this approach of making transitions, you might want to think about how and when it would be appropriate for you to use a transition where you repeat a key word in the concluding sentence of one paragraph and in the first sentence of the next paragraph. And there are all sorts of variations on that. That's just one technique. Okay, the third thing that I want you to notice about the structure of Shanti's essay is that she writes paragraphs of varying lengths. And some of her paragraphs are actually just one sentence. So I'm just going to quickly scroll through the essay so that you can see that there are these um, varying lengths for paragraphs. And they're not, it's not that they follow a formula. They are just of different lengths. And here's the thing. If you're writing a traditional essay for one of your classes, you know, most professors, most teachers are going to tell you you shouldn't write a paragraph that's just one essay. That's a one, that's just one sentence. But that's not true of personal essays. And I think that in an application essay where you're dealing with an audience, right, the admissions officers who are reading hundreds and hundreds of applications, their eyes are bleary, their minds are weary, and you're going to need to use some techniques to make certain key points pop out. And if, if someone is confronted with a series of long paragraphs or a series of paragraphs that are all the same length, it's just sort of numbing. Um, so the one sentence paragraph is something that you might want to see if it, if it would work for you in your essay because it adds a certain pop and a certain um, sort of powerful punch to what you're reading and makes the reading experience a bit more pleasurable. So that's it for now. If you like this video, I would love it if you liked it and left me a comment. Um, if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, make sure that you do. And I would really love it if you went over to my website and you got yourself on my private email list so I can keep you up to date with all sorts of goodies and you can get your free bonus videos from my online session. Take care. Bye.